Hey, it's Doris with all the books and I'm just going to go ahead and apologize in advance. This is going to be probably most likely a rambly disconnected video, but I just have too many little bits and pieces that I want to try to mash up together into one video so I can move on with my life. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, so anyway, Mercedes just put up a video in which she combined TBRs for Book buddy -a -thon and The Owls. And I was like, oh, for two reasons. The first being that Mercedes doesn't normally put up TBRs and do readathons like that very often. So that was kind of fun. And the second was because well, three reasons. <laughs> the second was because I was already doing Aprilathon, which I haven't even started. I was thinking to do Aprilathon anyway, and Book Buddyathon. And the owls looked like fun, but I already had two readathons, and we don't want to go crazy, but really we do. Um, and I don't normally post TBRs for readathons, I just do um, reading vlogs of them. But I kept seeing like so many Aprilathons go up last weekend, and then Book Buddyathons have started to go up, and the Owl TBRs have gone up. And to be quite honest, I felt a little jealous. Like I want to join the party, is what I'm saying. So when she put that mashup up, I was like, yeah, that's it. And then like number three, ding, ding, ding. I finally started thinking about it and I'm like, I can just get all of this taken care of with one video. So I can put up a TBR because I haven't done a TBR yet this year because I've had shelves. So for January, I did my Middle Eastern shelf and I just read off of that. And February, um, I had my Black History Month shelf and I just read off of that and that worked brilliantly. And then March, I took a break and just read randomly, and that was great fun too. But now I'm feeling like dis disconnected, so I want to get everything in order. So TBR, right? Um, so yeah, I just want to get everything tidied up and going. And then the other problem is I haven't done my March haul yet because I have an order from Book Depository that hasn't come in, and Lord knows when it will. Um, so there's that. So I haven't been able to do my book book haul and those are sitting on the table. It's just, you know, too much. And I keep wanting to talk about um, the books that I'm reading for the Women's Prize for Fiction and the ones I've already read and which ones I'm going to read and my plans for that. But again, waiting on the book deposit to reorder. So let me just move on. I've decided to do the owls. I've picked 12 books for those and these are all the new books that have come in thus far. So book hauls being checked off. And of course, half of that book haul is the books I ordered for Women's Prize for Fiction. So that'll give you a little hint of that. And yeah, so let's just, you know, dive right in. And also I should mention that, um, I never get stressed out with these readathons and reading plans and goals and all those shenanigans because I play Calvin Ball. And if you grew up, I think the late 80s and the 90s, you're familiar with Calvin and Hobbes. If you don't know Calvin and Hobbes, I suggest you look it up and buy some. They're the best comics in the world outside of Farside, which also is extremely good. But yes, Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes play this little game called Calvin Ball. It's basically a ball game and they create the rules and the rules change in the middle of the game to suit their needs. So, you know, I figure if it's my game, I'm hurting nobody by cheating. So I cheat when I play these games. I'm just telling you. So some of these owls that I'm sitting for, which are basically, um, and I will link these videos below that you can find out more about the owls and the book buddy a thon and yada yada. But basically the owls are exams you sit for and they're topical. And 
some of the books that I picked out to match the topics are a little seedy, but it's all good. It's all good. So let me just jump right in with my owls and get that going. And I'm going to do the first five um, are books that I already had in my stash. And then the remainder will be my first half of my March book haul. And the other half, I guess I'll just share real quick when they come in. So, we have for Arithmancy, Six of Crows, which is a book with a number on the cover. Fits the bill. And um, this one I'm listening to on Audible. So, halfway through and enjoying it thus far. And then for Ancient Runes, which you're supposed to have a book with a symbol. I'm doing Crooked Kingdom, which is the sequel to Six of Crows. I mean, everybody in the universe probably knows that. Um, and the symbol here is this crow, which is the symbol for one of the gangs, and they get it tattooed on their body to symbolize they're a member of the gang. So this one fits really well. I did well with these first two categories. And then we're going to Care of Magical Creatures. And I haven't gotten to The Girl Who Drank the Moon yet, so I'm eager to get to it. And, you know, Dragon. So, super cute. I'm, I'm so excited about this one. And then Herbology. Herbology. I have Element by Fiona Mosley. This one was... Um, shortlisted for the man booker last year and it's currently on the long list for the women's prize for fiction and this one i already had on my shelf um, and didn't get to it last fall when i wanted to so definitely want to get to this and i think i did well with this because herbology i mean that's definitely definitely a lot of flora on the cover of this book so and then this one um transfiguration you were to have a book with Transfiguration, which is kind of a hard topic, definitely. So you could also get a book with Black Cats on the cover. So I'm going with Thorny Hold by Mary Stewart. And there's no Black Cat on the cover that I could see. Um, maybe it's hidden there. I, I don't see it. But... Um, on the back cover in the blurb it says reputation for magic and it's resident black cat so i think that works i think i think i'm still going going well with this no cheats yet no cheats um and then these are this is my new books haul for march so these are the ones that i brought into my house last month. So, Muggle Studies is a nonfiction book. So for that, I have Educated by Tara Westover. This is a memoir of a family that grew up off the grid in Utah. And the daughter, the youngest daughter, um, never been to school and she teaches herself enough math to pass the ACTs and get into Brigham Young University and then eventually gets a degree from Cambridge and Harvard and yeah so this is her memoir thinking about her life so this is my nonfiction muggle study and then um, let's get let's get the ch we'll save the cheats for the end <laughs> Uh, what, what is this? History of Magic. So for History of Magic, you're to read a historical fiction. So I have Miss Burma by Charmaine Craig. This is long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And it is historical fiction set in Burma. Excited about that one. And then, um, it's another cheat. <laughs> We have The Immortalist by Chloe Craig. This one is for, what is this one for, guys? Um, 
divination and prophecies. So this one is perfect. I did well. This one is the four children that get their fortunes told and learn. Each one learns what day they're going to die in the future and how they live their lives with that knowledge. So, yes. And then, um, let's see, what is this one? Defense Against the Dark Arts. For that one, that one you're supposed to do secret clubs and societies. So I have Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. And this is a YA fantasy and the um, king, the, the man in power, has killed off all the people with magical abilities. So, of course, there's always a seed of... Um, uprising and so the few magical people have banded together to come back you know so it's this girl who has magical abilities and she meets the true princess and her brother I guess he's a prince and yeah so I think that'll work well and then um, for charms which is just read a fantasy novel I have the city of brass by S.A. Chakrabarti Forty. Sorry. Um, this is definitely a fantasy, and I've heard great things. It was pretty darn hyped a couple months ago, and I don't remember much about it, but I bought it, <laughs> and I'm excited to read it. <laughs> and then um, th we're 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 entering the cheat zone now. So for astronomy, which is a science fiction which is a category that I do not read much of, typically. I do have, um, I think it's, yeah, Annihilation that I could read, but I wanted to read all my new books. So, I'm going with the red clocks on this one. This is a futuristic, kind of a little bit dystopian novel about society has altered and um, abortions and in vitro fertilization um, and things like that Planned Parenthood type topics that are all the you know hot topics in politics right now have been outlawed so there's some sciencey topics in here it's not necessarily futuristic with the science I don't think but it's a futuristic novel so we're just we're just going with it because it's my game my rules I mean, it's not my game, but it's I'm, I'm playing it by myself. You know what I mean? Um, and then for, this one is the worst. I did bad. For um, potions, which is alchemy, which is, I think of it most as, you know, changing metal to gold. But it's just changing material things. It's the precursor to chemistry, apparently. Um, but I'm going with The Idiot by Elif Batuman. And this is another one on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And the reason that I'm making it, and I swear, I had this thought even before the owls came about, at least before I heard of them. But every time I see this rock, I think of fool's gold, even though it's not um, got the fool's gold on it. That's just how my, brain, my, 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 my mind works. So yeah, anyway, this one. For transfiguration okay and then I'm also doing a book buddy a thon which I will also try to link those videos below announcing it that is um, next week Monday through Sunday so the 9th through the 15th of April and for that one there are five challenges for the one week so the owls are 12 challenges for the whole month and Book buddy thought is five challenges for the week. And you can double up on those if you want to. So, I mean, you can do whatever you want to do because you're the one reading. Um, that's my opinion. But, the obviously, you have to read with a buddy. So, Thorny Hold, which I've already mentioned, is my buddy read for sure. And then, one, there's four words. So, kind of like Nonfiction November last year, which was really cool. They gave you four words to be inspired by. 
they took that the that idea and incorporated it. So the four words are friendship, adventure, fun, and new. So I figure I've got those four topics covered in the stack of books for the owls. Um, but I have one more women's prize for fiction long-listed book that is new, a new haul, um, that I need to read. The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy. And again, I'm not, I don't really remember what this one's about, but you know, I'm sure someone out there does. I will soon, hopefully this month. Some of these are hefty. I don't know. I'm going to try to get them all done this month. We'll see. But this one would have to count for probably the new book. If I wanted to read all my new my new books. How cool would that be to read all my new books in one month? The month after I got them? That'd be crazy. Um, so, yeah. That's what I got. And, whoo, I rambled. But now I could put, like, a lot of books away and get organized and... Yeah, pretty excited. So, if you're still here, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Bye!